Hi everyone, Linda Israel here. Thank you so much for being here during my live stream. I greatly appreciate your support. I've pre-recorded this so that we can have some of the behind the scenes done while you listen to me for just a moment. I again want to thank you so very much for being here during my live stream. If you could give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends so that they can come join us. And if you will also give me a comment in the comment section after this video is done and then definitely speak up in the chat and say hi lastly if you haven't subscribed please subscribe now if you're watching this as a replay generally if you're on a computer you can go down below and look for the little gear you can change that and make the speed faster if you're on a mobile device look up in the corner up in this area for three little dots and you can change the speed there as well those of you that are here live, do definitely speak up in the chat. I greatly appreciate you being here. Well, those that are here live earn a virtual currency. Junkie Joe should be coming up here in just a moment, and you'll be able to check how many bucks that you have. What are bucks? They're junk bucks. It's just a virtual point system that I have created on my account when we're live so that you can redeem those once you get to 2000 for a $10 off coupon to my shop. So you can type exclamation point bucks to see how many that you have. And if you have 2000 and you're ready for a coupon code, type exclamation point award. And my official note takers will take down that information. Now, if you haven't already created an account on my website at Linda Israel.com, please do so and then send me a message through the contact form letting me know what your YouTube username is. Why? So I'll have your email address and I can email you your coupon code. Also, if you make a donation throughout this live stream, you can be added to my YouTube donators membership that I have on my website. So again, create an account, say, hey, Linda, I donated and tell me what your username is on YouTube if it's different. That way I can get you added to that. At the end of this stream, I will have journals made and you will have the opportunity to win one of those journals. Throughout the live stream, we'll have some various raffles and we also have in chat games. So be looking out for that in the chat and I'll kind of speak it up when I get to it. For example, if you type exclamation point raffle right now, you can be in a chance to win 200 junk bucks. So you'll be well on your way to getting 2000 junk bucks. Normally, Robin is my official note taker. Sometimes Angelica is my official note taker. It kind of depends on what's going on. These are members and administrators of my Facebook group, the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group. If you haven't joined that group, we'd love to have you come and join us over there. What else? Let's keep the chat upbeat, friendly, and helpful. Hey, if you have a question, try to put it in all caps. That way I'll see it. If I don't see it, please don't be offended. The chat sometimes moves fast and I'm usually looking down trying to create things. So please ask again. But if you know the answer that someone else to someone else's question, please go ahead and answer for them. I greatly appreciate that. Let's see, what else? Oh, if you have a YouTube channel, you can't post your link, but you can say, I have a YouTube channel and tell us a little bit about it. Tell us your channel name, something like that. Tell us what you do. We're gonna get started here in just a moment. I'm looking at the time. So roughly five minutes is when uh, I'll get started. So it should be just a few more seconds. So definitely hang out in the chat and we'll get started here in just a moment.
Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Can you hear me? Can you see me? <laughs> it's Thursday, the first of the month, and we are doing some mixed media. We're going to do some gel printing today. I'm so glad to have each and every one of you here. Hey, remember, again, if you're watching this as a replay, you can speed this video up. But I definitely do want you to give me a thumbs up share this video and of course after the live stream or anytime you're on one of my videos make sure that you leave a comment tell me what you liked about the stream or the video or maybe something that you would like to see in the future alrighty <clears throat> I have a 12 by 12 gel plate here I think I have the links in the description box to get them from Amazon you know get them wherever is most affordable for you if you are going to buy something and I happen to have a link, it's probably to Amazon and I get a small commission for that. So I appreciate it if you use it, if you're going to be buying something anyway. <laughs> All right. So I've got a few stencils out, you know, and this one's on top. So we're going to use it. It's one of my older stencils. I called this open lattice and it's kind of one of my favorite stencils that I use a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. You tell from the paint and the wear that's on here. And I've got some basic acrylic paints. So I've got Anita's all-purpose acrylic paint. I probably even have some folk art. I think most of what I have laying here is Anita's. I think there, well, there's a folk art. So really the craft paint is going to be a little more chalky and dry you're looking on journal pages. And I kind of like that effect because you can write over it quite easily. All right, so, hey, Jenny, welcome. And thank you, Robin, for always being here and helping me out. I greatly appreciate you. I know I don't say it often enough, but thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, you know, if y'all have a rake you want to send out, send it to Robin because she deserves it. She's so helpful to me. All right, so I've got a soft rubber brayer, and then, like I said, I've got a variety of paints. So I'm looking at this thinking, what color do I want to use today? And I'm working with the Garden Tea Party, and I wanted to have a couple couple of gel printed elements that I might use in the next couple of journals. So how about, I want a blue, so let me grab my blue. I've got a blue here, and this one is called Royal Blue, and sometimes it can be a little dark, but I don't want it to be super pale blue. So here's what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little paint on here in a couple of spots. And then I'll grab ivory or white and just a little bit, just kind of putting a little dot. Okay. It looks like reverse eyeballs there. <laughs> Hi, Connie. <laughs> and I'm going to take my soft brayer and just kind of mix that paint just a little bit. And as you can see, it's not quite as light as this paint, but it's not the original dark. All right, now that I feel I've got my paint color mixed the way that I want, I'm spending some time using my brayer to mush that paint out. You don't want too much when you get started because if you do, it'll take it forever to dry. And if you've noticed, I have quite a bit of paint on my plate. So I'm moving it around just a little bit. I'm gonna brayer off. A couple of times because I don't want it super duper thick but I do want good coverage and the darker colors you have to put a little bit more on if you want it to be opaque all right hey Morgan hey Ashley welcome 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 all right so now what I'm going to do is while I still have the stencil in place I'm just going to grab I've got some spools that thread just to be on and I'm just going to make some texture where the stencil isn't covered okay and I'll just clean that off and then I'm going to lift up my stencil and get my fingernail under it and lift that away and then I have a tub of water with a little bit of thieves cleaner I like these because it's non-toxic and it doesn't add a bunch of chemicals whenever I dump out the water I mean it's bad enough I have the acrylic plate right so I just put a little bit of warm water sometimes and a little a little cap full, not even quite a cap full. Like I told Robin a cap full and she filled it all the way to the top. I want to say a quarter cap full. <laughs> and then I let this dry for a moment. Um, sometimes when you're doing gel printing, 
and you're trying to go for a specific look where you have a nice crisp clear stencil pattern we'll let that dry a little bit um, there are other artists out there that just start smooshing others on top that's another technique as well where you're really blending that paint together but I wanted this to dry just a little bit let's see what else um who saw the live Monday who hung out with me while I made a journal I think I put it back here no I did not it's in the other room <laughs> I am going to be working on a series of videos uh, I started recording one for gel printing today using book pages to make elements for your junk journal out of the gel prints we'll kind of do that as well um, I'll be showing you some different ideas to make your own journals but I was thinking of making my own version of a, uh, a sample journal an index journal an inspiration journal a uh, journal that I could say oh yeah I remember that technique where I folded the paper this way to get that thingy or I use this kind of layers and so kind of a, a journal that just helps you be able to create your own stuff when you're stuck you were there Connie <laughs> I do owe a couple people uh, coupon codes and I'll get those there yeah Robin's usually there on uh, this afternoon okay so Ashley wants to know are there other methods of doing gel printing without having a jelly plate just curious if something else could be placed underneath without buying another tool the gel plate for gel printing the gel plate is by far the best now what you can do is you can do direct to paper so when I am letting this paint dry with the stencil pattern instead what I would do is say take my brayer and cover a whole page of book page with paint then I would take a stencil and lay that over and a brayer doesn't really work as well for this technique so I will use what I call a dauber got one right here so it's one of the Tim Holtz daubers and I put the sponge on it and I will sponge paint through my stencil and then you get that stencil look so it's a little different effect you'll get different texture out of it but gel printing is really you need the gel plate but you can get some cool effects by doing direct paper does that make sense all right I think this is pretty much dry enough I don't know it's still a little damp in a couple of places Hey, if you have more questions, please do speak up. Let me hear them or read them <laughs> and you can hear my answer. <laughs> uh, what else? Um, gel printing, you know, you can do it on just about anything that. Um... Yes, yes, yes. You got you just got your yours got updated, Morgan. <laughs> OK, good, Ashley. I'm glad that helps. You know, you can use all kinds of papers. You'll want to experiment if you're using really old paper. It has a tendency to be brittle. And when you put it on a gel plate, it may stick to it. And so then it's a mess. You got to go clean it all off. So do test your papers if you're using old paper. I've got a new mat on my desk and I don't know if I like it or not I did it because I thought the color would be easier when reflecting all right so this is just about dry I can still see some wet areas on it you know and I've done this in the past is a, a grab a file folder and just kind of fan it turn the ceiling fan up a little bit Gotcha, Morgan. Yeah, you just do your junk bucks rank by typing exclamation point bucks and it'll tell you how many you have. All right. I think this looks pretty good. Now, what color do I want to do over this pretty shade of blue? And I get stuck in a rut every so often that I use the same colors over and over and over. And I know y'all get sick of it. <laughs> But I'm gonna do it again unless y'all speak up with something I've got a pink here this one's hot pink so I'm gonna put a little bit over there and I think I've got this uh, light turquoise I'm gonna put some light turquoise over here 
You just pulled out your gel plate, Marianne? Gotcha. Well, have fun. Get it out and play. Definitely. And if you have questions while you're printing, Marianne, just speak up. All right, so I'm taking my paint that I've put on my plate. I picked two colors, and I'm okay that it will blend together a little bit. Basically, think, you know, when I was telling you direct to paper, if you wanted your paper to have this muddled background, then just spray her onto a piece of paper like I'm doing right now. Let that dry a moment and then put the stencil on top. All right, I'm going to grab a book page or I've got some dictionary page. So I'm just kind of placing it where I think I can at least center where the stencil pattern was. <clears throat> and then I've got some scrap papers here that I'm going to use around the edges. And I'll just use another book page up here and use all of that. Yeah, definitely. And if you're uh, if you're if you're gel printing today too, or later, you know, after you're watching this video and it's the middle of the night, take some pictures. Love to see what your gel prints look like and tag me within the group at Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group or you can go over to lindaisrael.com and uh, send me a message there with the contact me and so I can have your email address. I think I want to try doing a uh, feature on my blog. I got to talk to Robin about it see if she wants to help me with this um, where we do a quick little challenge like gel print and then make something with your gel print and then you send me a a quality photo and then a description of what you did and I'll share it on my blog. Alright, so that was the edge of the paper and I still had some paint, some crusty bits and I leave it on there from gel printing a little bit earlier today. Oh, thank you Morgan for your donation. I greatly appreciate it. I really do. I appreciate y'all supporting me. All right, so here we go. Here's the big reveal. I'm thankful for each and every one of you. Okay, I think we'll do something like that. So we'll just get started right now. So if you gel print, or maybe you got a gel print from somebody, it didn't have to be yours. Gel print, take a picture of the gel print or multiples of gel prints, then make something with those gel prints and then just write a little paragraph. I used my gel prints to make a mini journal. I used my gel prints to make envelopes. I used my gel prints to, and then tell me what you made and I want a picture of that. And we'll put it on the blog. And what I'll do is I can probably print the pictures and I can do a quick video with them too. All right, what do you think of that? So that's with the pink in the background, a little bit of that blue, and the pink over here. There was a little bit of crusty bits, so we were seeing those every once in a while. It just makes for a fun element page that you can use. Thank you, thank you. Hey, I, I greatly appreciate anything that y'all help with, whether it be a thumbs up, sharing the video, leaving me comments. Those help too, so you don't think you have to financially support me, but I appreciate it too because it keeps me coming back and playing with y'all. All right, let's get another one out. This is the uh, Victorian cross stitch button. Sometimes when I make a stencil, I'll ask my administration team, hey, what do you think I should call this stencil? And sometimes they come up with some really clever things. Some things I'm like, what <laughs> what do you see when you look at that design so i think i want to do something a little bit differently you know we're always doing the bright vivid colors because that's what i enjoy and i know occasionally people want to see some more muted uh, vintage sepia tones so i grabbed a couple of brown paints i've got them laying over here and i've got some gold so what if in the center here I'm going to put down, let me see if this one's open. Yeah, I've got some antique gold. Now, this is a heavy body paint, and I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to come in here and brayer through the stencil. I'm going to put a generous amount because I'm going to remove some paint in a moment with a tool, 
and I need there to be a quality amount of paint to begin with. All right, so this is a heavy body paint, but sometimes it goes fast in drying. I'm just grabbing some bubble wrap. It's kind of a, a two for one texture. And I'll just lift that off. If you have the room where you can take this bubble wrap and then press it to another piece of paper, do that. I don't have the room, so I just set it aside. I'm gonna lift this stencil and then we're gonna let that dry for a moment. Is it Victorian cross stitch flowers? Okay, I thought it was Victorian cross stitch. <laughs> so because I did that, that cross stitch area is gold and it's gonna be in the front of my page. When I lift my gel print, it'll be on top of whatever I put down, down behind it. And I wanted this pattern to have another texture within it. So it'll kind of give it, I think, a little bit of a grungy look to it. All right, so this paint dries a lot faster, so I'm just gonna test. Looks like it's just about dry. There's a couple of spots that aren't, so we'll keep doing that. Again, if y'all have questions, please speak up. Um, I have been watching a couple of videos, uh, Roxy Creates, Pam from the Paper Outpost, uh, Corey Dunham, I think is her name. I always get her name wrong, it's Corey D. Um, just to get some cute ideas. So I'm hoping that some of those are just to remind me of things that I used to make 20 years ago. That's a lot of what's going on with me right now is I'll see something that somebody else makes and I'm like, oh, well, what if I made my version of it? So that's a, another thing that I've been working on. So do check out other people's videos on YouTube here. And hey, if you have a, a YouTube channel, speak up in the uh, chat so we know. You did the bubble wrap technique technique the other day. You thought it was a cool effect? I think so too. It's cool effect all by itself. And I think it's cool to do, doing it in layers with stencils. All right, so I've got a couple of shades of brown that I picked out. I don't want to go super duper dark, but I've got one that's called coffee. So I'm going to put a little bit of the coffee down. And I'm going to grab a little bit lighter one. This one is a, it's called sandstone. It's a little bit lighter and I'm going to kind of cross it over and mix this just a little bit. All right, so I'll pick up some paint and I'm just kind of moving it around. Now, wherever I have a blotch of paint, that's gonna be a higher concentration of the color. So I'm just going to keep brayering it. And I've got a lot of paint. You want to make sure that your brayer is rolling and not pushing across your gel plate. Got a little too much paint, but that's okay. We can get it going. We can get it working. Because we're a gel printer. <laughs> I don't know. That didn't, didn't rhyme. <laughs> we're just being silly for the fun of it. All right, so I'm going to get another book page. Um, Jenny, when I gel print, I will show you here in just a second, I have a tub over here to the side that I put water and thieves cleaner in. That way I have a plethora of stencils because I have, what, a hundred and some odd in the shop, plus the stencils and stencil club, plus all the stencils that come in the subscription box and creative kits. So I really don't necessarily need to stop and go back and use a stencil that I've already used. So I just put it in my tub. I'll show you the tub. It's just a tub. And then I just drop the stencils down in there. And if I'm in a hurry, generally, if I come ahead and dip this in and then lay out a towel on my desk, I can dry that really fast. So it, it helps me, okay? And I use uh, kitchen towels in my craft room. I use a lot of these old kitchen towels. Whatever uh, didn't seem worthy to keep in the kitchen, or I will specifically buy some. I had a lot of paint on here. I'll specifically buy some. This may not show up the way I thought it was going to. We're going to see. I should have probably gone with a darker color. I'm trying to clean off the edges of my gel plate. It's 
really tone on tone. You're welcome, Granny's Place. Ah! Oh, it did work a little bit. I think I should have picked a little different color. Maybe even made the brown lighter. Can you see the texture there? That looks cool. All right, I'm, I'm really starting to think I don't like this mat. It's like it moves or something. I don't know. I may have to swap it out. I thought this would work, but maybe not. All right, let's see what we can do now. Yep, just these and water. So a mild detergent is what I would use if you don't have the thieves cleaner um, because you're going to stick your hands in that every once in a while and you don't want your hands soaked in some other chemical and I just like because the water cleans up the stencils really easily. All right let's do uh, what else we got here. I like the way that one turned out. All right so I'm going to try something with the August stencil club okay so that's from the august stencil club are y'all in the raffle is it time it's only been 30 minutes right all right oh i've, I've mentioned earlier if uh, yeah i do too morgan um if you have a youtube channel just pick up and say hey i got um I've got a YouTube channel and tell us what you do. And then also I'd love to hear who's your favorite people to watch on YouTube. Yeah, use Don Lishing dis dishwashing liquid and come play the FF games. <laughs> Robin says. Because apparently the girls swear that if they just washed up with uh, Dawn dish soap and Junky Joe liked them today. Alright, so this time the flower pattern itself is uh, intricate so whatever we put in the centers or with the color is going to be on the outside i want to use a little bit of brown i think on top of another color but maybe i want to do it in reverse i don't know i am i'm going to use the uh, purple I've got that hyacinth a pale pale hyacinth color so i'm gonna put a little bit of that up there and then I've got a pink, so I'll put a little pink over here. And then I've got this turquoise color that I'll use a little bit of. So I've just kind of made three little areas. So I'm going to pick up my sprayer and kind of work just a little bit of that color. All right, and now I'm just going for it because it will pretty much be whatever color hit that gel plate first, but it'll also be blended. All right, I'm going to use some texture on the edge. And we'll let this one dry. Alrighty. I'm looking at the chat. Is there anything else you have questions about? <laughs> Cleaning your stencils. And I have started storing my stencils in file folders. So as I said, here is the file folder for the August Stencil Club. And then I've started, I'm going to ask Robin to help me with this. I've started sorting like circles and it, I had used this file folder that says circles big and small because I have that brand, that name and then circle stencils, circles with dots. So I really want to make an index on the front. I may even do this index where I take the thumbnails of these and then print them smaller so I can just print it on the front. And then I separate my stencil sometimes with a pattern of it. Like that's my giant broken circles. And that's the circles with wedge, wedge circle. I can't even get it out. Do I have it backwards? There it is. Wedge circles. So that's how I store my stencils.
Oh yeah, and I have some handmade paper in my shop. Here's a sample of it while we're waiting on the gel plate to dry. Ah, don't fall down on me. Alrighty now, file folder. You and me are getting ready to go round and round. That's three times. <laughs> so here is one of, oh, we're starting to flash out. Come on, because it's kind of white. One of the ivory gray. It has some really cool texture. It's a really nice thick. I had some pink papers. Some of them with organic materials from plants. So it's been kind of fun making that too. Uh, in September-ish, I think I'm going to have a in-person workshop where we make uh, paper from scratch, handmade paper. And because we're going to do it outside and I want to do it on a nice cool day. All right, I think this is dry enough, so I want to come back with a brown to kind of help with that little bit of vintage and crossing over from color. So I'm going to grab that same brown that I had a while ago, which was coffee. And then I'm going to grab just a little bit of some gold and kind of do it in a couple of spots where the brown already is. And then let's kind of... So I'm mixing it in with that. So I'll have a little bit of a metallic gold in that brown. That's my plan. Mm -hmm. You can always make your gel prints look a little more vintage after you print by spraying some Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist on it. All right, I was trying to lift the stencil. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to uh, grab another dictionary page. Lay that down. I've got one that I've been printing the portions on. Let's clean off the edges. All right, y'all have any questions? My chat's not moving, so I don't see anything. <laughs> what do you got plans for the weekend? I'll be working on the subscription boxes, getting those ready. My Tatter or Angels order shipped today, so I'm glad I should have it hopefully earlier. All right, time for the raffle. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to load up the gel plate with some more paint and then we'll draw. So y'all get in on the raffle. It's just cleaning up that edge. It kind of came out of purple. Cleaning up the gel plate. This should be interesting. It made the colors a little dusty. I like it. And you see occasionally a shimmer of gold in there. You see that? That's kind of cool. I like that. Now what if we did it in the reverse? You think you entered already? All right, let me put some other stencil on here. Let's, um, I have my circle stencil. Oh, you know, what? I kind of like this stencil. I don't know why. That'll be kind of fun because we can also put some texture on here. All right, so if I want the centers to be the color and then the background to be brown, or do I want the centers to be brown and the background to be color? Let's do it that way. So I'm going to use a brown. I've got a couple of shades and a little bit of gold. All right.
A little bit too much pain. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. So I'm brayering it off. Little by little. Alright. So, do we want to do bubble wrap again? I kind of like the way that looked last time. So let's do it this way. Alrighty. And then we'll lift. Da, 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 da. There we go. We'll let that dry. Okay, so do y'all want me to make something with the gel print or just keep printing? Yeah, I had pinks and blues in the last one. What stencil was the last one? That was from the Artistic Stencil Club. August Artistic Stencil Club. That was this one. I'm just using the different colors in the background. All right, I think everybody's in the raffle. I think you've made it. You got to be in it to win it. Who's going to get 200 junk bugs? <laughs> Make something. All right, Connie. All right. Giveaway. All right, let's pick a winner. The winner of 200 junk bucks is Robin. <laughs> Robin gets 200 junk bucks. How many junk bucks do you have right now, Robin? <laughs> Make something with the gel print. Okay. Raffle, Barb, you just missed it. <laughs> Uh, yay! You. Okay, reset. Go here. And let's do a gel print and mop up pages. Alright, so we're going to have another prize here. I have hand selected. So here's some mop up papers. I'm trying not to touch my uh, gel plate. Look for mop up papers. Put them in my lap. So this is just where I was spraying in my spray box. Here's a gel print that I made. And I'm throwing them in the floor. Okay, there we go. There's another gel print. There's a gel print. Gel print. This was made on eight by 10 gel plate. Here's a sprayed background. So what I did was I laid down some notebook paper laid a stencil over and sprayed so I was decorating the notebook paper but I positioned it so that I could use this as a journal page so you could doodle around this edge you could add stitches the back, back side I just spray and you can kind of see the stencil pattern another mop-up paper another mop-up paper with the mandala stencil that's the uh, more little daisies and then there's some more gel printing where I clean off the edge of my gel plate I have been fighting a headache for a week with my allergies. Took a bunch of Benadryl and Tylenol before I started the live stream. All right, this should be dry enough now. All right, so do we want to use, um, let's do the teal, purple, maybe a blue, purple, and teal. So let's start with teal. So. I'm going to start with teal in this corner and I'm going to grab a blue and I'm going to grab this darker purple. All right, so I'm going to start up here and brayer in that teal. Then I'll kind of clean off my brayer a little bit. All right, so now I'm just really going to go back and forth. Okay, 
got a little too much teal, so I'm trying to smooth it out a little. Okay. Who won? Who won? You won! Congratulations, Sydney! All right, so now I'm going to lift the print onto a book page again. Just grabbing some random. So this will be cool with the different edges on there. Did we do the bubble wrap again? I've already forgotten what we did. <laughs> All right, we'll we'll clean this off. And uh, let me grab. Trying to get some of the paint off my desk. All right. Letting that soak in. Just letting it soak in. All right. We got one o'clock. Ooh, look at that color. That's kind of cool. It's kind of a, just the, the way it went from one color to the next. Cool, cool, cool. Y'all ready for the big reveal? <laughs> we had a small crowd today. Eating strawberry shortcake. Oh my goodness. Come on over. All right, now here is the bigger piece. Oh, I like this. All right, what do you think of that? It's got that golden brown in the background. Isn't that cool? You see the texture from the bubble wrap that it made? So it allowed some of that lighter color to come through in some of the circles. Yeah, show us, Sydney says. Show us your strawberry shortcake. All right, I'm going to get this off. I like that I've rearranged my room so that when I gel plate print, I can just put it back here behind me. I don't have to worry about if something is set on top of it. <laughs> I'm just moving some stuff out of the way so I can move my mat that I don't like. It wrinkles up. So I don't know... If I need to tape it down, or if it's, that's just going to be the nature of it. All right. So they said make something. And I was playing around the other day. Let me grab a book page here. So I just have a random book page. I think it's out of a gardening book. In fact, you may get one. And you like that? So pretty? Okay. Um, you may get one in your subscription box. So let's look at some gel prints, including this one that we just made. And what would look good together? So I think I like, oh, you know what? I can use this one right here and save my bigger sheets for something else. I like the open lattice and I think we're going to want a little bit of at least these two. I think I want to save that one, but these I can cut up. So we'll put this on the bottom, get these out of the way. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to use my ruler and do some ripping. So I'm going to start here. Kind of line up my ruler and I'm going to rip it. Okay, and I don't need the whole thing, I'm pretty confident that I could use about oh, maybe a three inch strip 
So I'm just going to tear it. Ah. Well, it tore. We're just going to use it. I got a little strip there. And I'm going to go ahead and tear these apart. Because I want to alter the way they look. And it's okay if they're square. Okay. So let's grab, let's do a strip of this guy. So I'm going to cut off kind of where that edge is. But I'm making it wide enough that I can use it later on. Okay. And then let's do about, let's do about a two inch square ripped up strip. I can't get my words out. And I like this blue. So again, I'm just going to tear the edge. And let's get, let's get a little wider piece. Maybe three and a half inches wide. Or two and a half inches wide. Okay, and then maybe... I think I want a bigger piece of this one too. Oh man, that happens. But I think I want about, would that one look good? I really like this corner better, but. All right, Linda, tear evenly. There we go, that's better. Okay, so I've got this piece of paper here and I kind of like to look at it and say, what do I want to do? For covering it up okay so I'm just kind of playing around with how I've got this together maybe since I tore that we could put it here and this piece could kind of come down in the corner I may even use this as just a plain piece that didn't have any color on it and I may go like that and then do we want to do a strip again? We could slide this down and then do a strip that way. I don't know that I need this other turquoise piece. Maybe I should do it this way. So you can kind of see what I did. I'm just wake, making a collage all over the page. Now you can go ahead and do some distress inks on the edges. So I'm just going to quickly do that on a couple of the edges and I think this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start on this side. We're going to start right about here and go from top to bottom and I'll just use, uh oh, my paintbrush not cooperating. I'll just use some Lean's Tacky Glue. I am going to cut this up a little bit but I think for the most part this is going to work fine. You could also use your glue pot if you really want to make sure that everything is adhered really well. And I'm going to make sure that I've got some print. I'll grab my bone folder and kind of smooth that out. It's okay. It's hanging off the edge. That's okay. We can survive. All right. I think I'll rip this. I, sometimes I like to use a straight <laughs> edge. Yeah, that gold is kind of pretty, isn't it? How it just kind of pops just a little bit. And I think I want this over here. I had some extra glue on this piece of paper, so. And then if we did that one there. Oh, I can glue this one down first. So I'm going to go over that edge. So I know that I kind of messed up and this one has that rip in it. So I'm just going to try to be more conscious of putting glue there. And now I'll put that down. And smooth it. Okay, what was she wondering? Oh yeah, yeah, the glue pot. All right, so basically I take a little container, put a sponge in it, 
put a little bit of water and water and glue and I use a lean's tacky glue and then what I'll do is when I'm finished I'll put a little bit more glue on top but this is wet so you can see that and it's also kind of sticky but it's a little bit easier to apply if with a paintbrush and I just use a, a quality paintbrush and then when I'm done I uh, put it in a water vat for it to um, clean up. All right, so I'm going to rotate this one and kind of overlap it maybe a little bit. Somehow everything shifted, but I do have this gold piece, so we'll do that. Okay, I got a plan. Do you want to hear it? <laughs> All right, so I gotta look at this. I want to put this down. I want to put it so that it's over both both places. <laughs> Have you ever used ribbon strips as a background for your paper and attach journal space on top of it? Not as a piece like that. I've made pockets out of ribbons, but not actual ribbon like stripping it together and basically making what I call a Franken page. You're just kind of collaging over a page and we're making a new uh, substrate that we're going to use for our junk journal. But no, I haven't, I don't really have that many scraps of ribbon, honestly. And technically other than like today, I hardly have scraps anymore left over. I try to work that I use every piece while I'm creating. You know, I know what size it is. So if I cut it this by this, then I know that I can make a thingy here and a thingy there. <laughs> All right. So let's put that down, but I don't see why you couldn't do it. You'll just need to, um, Make sure you've got a good adhesive under it so that anything you stick on top, but also you gotta remember it does add bulk to your journal. And that's mainly why I like to use book pages and gel prints and scrapbook paper as opposed to a lot of the heavier items. All right, I'm gonna lift this again, get it a little straighter. Well, I'm just going to put this piece down here. And something I wanted to do before I glued those papers down, but didn't do was stamp on those. But I think I want to, I'll stamp on them now. All right, so I've got those. So I'm gonna grab some piece of paper here. I think I'll stamp over the whole thing. You know, I, I use this stamp a lot. It's already mounted and that's the postcard collage. And I'm inking it with um, archival ink. So I'm just gonna kind of just kiss it. Not super hard impression, just barely trying to get some kind of a pattern. Okay. And I think I need something a little bit more there. So what about I could add a uh, butterfly. I've got this butterfly. I'll do that. And I'm okay because this will be, this is going to be directional, but I think I can stamp these in such a way, maybe. That it just kind of gives us a little
Okay. So I'm just adding a little bit there. Another thing we can do, and I've got one out, is we can do the shabby stitches. I'll get my piece of paper back here. And I've got a second piece of paper in case I need it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stamp across. And I'll stamp this way. And I want to stamp this way, but I don't want to come past. So I'm just going to lay a piece of paper here. And then stamp. And we'll do the same up here. I really need to trim it off, so I'm going to grab my scissors and trim the back, and then I can stamp around the edge. Close my lid. <laughs> All right, so what are we going to make? I'm going to make a large pocket, and I should also be able to make a belly band and a small pocket that we can use in our jack journal and then you can use these all in one journal if you want or you can mix them up and put them in multiples and you can save these if you want because they're small enough that you might be able to make a little something with them so I'm going to set them over there all right so I've got this portion now and I want to stamp here and actually I can go all the way across because it's the edge Living on the edge. <laughs> I'll go across this way. And I'm just lining it up as best I can. All right, so here I just need to go like this. And let's go that way. And we're going to go this way. And I need to go this way. And I think, ah, down here, I've just about got all of it stamped all the way around. Oh, need to do this edge. Sometimes you have to pull it away from your Moppet paper so you know what you're doing. All right, so there's that piece. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is we're going to measure it and then we're going to cut it down. So it is about almost six and three quarters inches wide. What did you miss? You missed some gel printing. I made all these gel prints today. You love the colors together? Well, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so I'm looking at this. I want to cut a strip off. And I think if I cut it off this way, you get more variety. Where if I cut it off this way, you're not getting near as much. You're just kind of getting these linear lines. So... I want this to be five inches wide, so that's going to make this almost a one and a half inch strip on the edge over here. And we'll, we'll re-stamp this, okay? And this way, I want it to be about eight inches tall. Well, that kind of makes it interesting because it leaves a little band here, so I'm going to cut this off. So now I have these three pieces that I can use. I'm going to go ahead and stamp this again. And I know it may seem silly to stamp it first and then cut it up, but I think it just kind of helps make it go a little bit faster. Because otherwise you'd have to go and stamp each little piece in all of these blocks, but I've already got them done, so all I'm doing... It's just going down. Ah, I do need to trim this because I want it to be eight and a half inches. So I'm going to line it up. Sometimes I'll use another piece of paper. And I think I'll go this way. And I'm just going to cut off a little bit here. All right, and again, we'll stamp. And we need to stamp there. All right, so here we are. We've got these little pieces. We can go around them with Distress Ink. Yeah. Yeah, it does add a lot of interest, doesn't it? Just, just adding a little bit of texture. So if you don't have a sewing machine, don't like to sew, but you like the look of stitches, 
then just stamp them on your projects. Okay? I kind of like the way this is coming together. So, I'm going to fold this in half a little bit. And I'm going to distress that on the inside. I'll show you why later. And then I'm going to fold it back this way. And I'm just distressing where that fold is. All right, now looking at this, I want to decide, do I want... Yeah, I think I want it to have the... A pocket coming out this way so I'm going to mark one two three it's about what is that four inches oh it is four inches because it was eight inches <laughs> so I'm gonna mark right here that's the halfway point between the two I've got all these layers together and I have a circle punch that I want the bigger one wrong size this one is a three-quarter inch so I'm going to come in here and come about halfway and then punch that away. Did you glue patches upon or copy? I glued patches. These were all These were all gel prints that I made and I cut them or tore them into smaller pieces and then I patch worked it to get that effect. I know a lot of people buy scrapbook pads that already have patterns of blocks, but I don't have like the fancy Tim Holtz papers. They're gorgeous papers, but I don't have them. I'm not going to go buy them. I thought, well, how can I do it with my own paint printed pages? All right. So now I've got this little divot here. And I can take this. Let me grab a page. I'll just grab this so I could take this now and I can glue here 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 and put it down and then grab let me grab it this will be too big but you'll get the gist of it a journal card that can come out this way on your page if you want okay and we can add more to that if we want so let's see here I've got my little tray of things I have I have this floral element you know that might look kind of cool on top of there just because I don't even know what it's from I think it's a Brutus Monroe it was old I found it in my stash Hey, Sharon. So glad to have you here. Yeah, it's almost freaking paper. Exactly. Yeah, and the, that was brown and gold that I used together. And I think I like that. I think this is an old Brutus Monroe stamp. I think I like that idea, even though this is split, but putting that in the middle there. So I'm going to glue that down. Poke, poke, nudge, nudge. All right, y'all get in on the raffle. And I've got one more raffle what we're going to do. I've got a mini journal that I'll give away just for y'all hanging out with me here on a Thursday. So I'll put that right there. And then I've got some words. You are my sunshine. Enjoy the journey. I don't know. Does that fit down there? And sometimes you don't have to go ahead and put all the embellishments on it right this second. You can wait until you're ready to put it in your journal. Let's go see how this looks. Y'all see the page? So if we imagine if it was in our book, is that what we would want it to do? 
or do we need it somewhere else? One day you will master it. It just takes time, Julie. That's all. It just takes time. What else? I was trying to see if I had some flowers, but they're so big. I have a bunch of big flowers. What if I put that on there? I thought this might look interesting putting that over that strip so you have kind of a high pocket. All right. All right, let's get in on the raffle. Y'all ready? That's for some gel prints. I was looking. Sydney got in. Connie, Ashley, Barb, Jenny, Sydney, Bonnie, Giovanna, Morgan. Y'all are in the raffle. Julie, put it. Don't put a space, lady. Put it together. <laughs> <laughs> I think I like that. Enjoy the journey. I think that's good. I'm going to glue that down. All right, Morgan's in the raffle. Julie's in the raffle. I think what we're going to do next is I'm going to finish making these elements to go on a journal page, and I'll make a couple of cards to go with each one, and that should finish out our live today. <laughs> Silly thing jumped on you. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right, I think we're ready. Sharon's in. Julie, Connie, Ashley, Barb, Jenny, Sydney, Bonnie. Giovanna and Morgan. All right, so let's pick a winner. Who's going to get these gel prints, gel prints and mop-up papers that I made? So you can do some fun things. All right. Sharon, congratulations, you won. Hey, if you would go over to my website at lindaisrael.com and create a user account and then send me a message through the contact me form and make sure that I have your mailing address and I'll get your prize sent out to you. So congratulations, Sharon. Thanks for being here. All right, let's reset. All right, so we're going to do one mini journal. So y'all go ahead and look at that. And I need to cut some paper. So that is one, two, three, four inches. So th a three and a half inch maybe size. So I'm going to cut a couple of cards real fast and I'll be right back. I got to go over to my big paper cutter.
Okay. Sorry about that. I had to go with my big paper cutter because I'm cutting a thicker cardstock. Thank you. Thank you. You like those little journals? All right. So when I pull the winner here in a little bit, you'll tell me yellow or purple, I guess. Purple, tea, pink, pink flower. Yellow or pink flower. That's what we'll call this. All right. Let me put it over here. All right. So y'all enter the raffle right now. Again, I'm just using some bits that I had left over on my desk. This is going to pretend go on a page and we need something to go in behind. So I cut a couple of journal cards that should fit right in here. Okay, so let's decorate these a little bit. I'll round the corners of them just so it gives it a nice unique look. Fighting crafty bosses and raffles, exactly, Sharon. <laughs> My next door neighbor, those of you who don't know, is a gamer. He loves to play video games and he knew all about the streaming software that I'm using to do the live stream so that I can see the chat and have the fun games and be able to do drawings and give away prizes and have y'all accumulate points so you could get junk bucks. So he helped me set it all up. He says, well, these are some of the in chat games where they can gamble in a sense their points and win some more points. So we kind of rewrote what was there because <laughs> it was a boss fight and you know, this is what had to happen. And so we go in and change. You know, the glitter went everywhere. <laughs> we sat and chuckled and laughed a lot when we set this all up. All right, I'm just adding some distress inks to all my pieces while I'm chatting with y'all. <laughs> my goal is to be finished by 2 o'clock. I've got to go work on my pewter stuff. All right, so we got this piece. I've got these guys that are going to go in here. So what can I do? You know what? I've got some fabric here, and even though I'm not going to take it to the sewing machine right now, I can sew it later. So I'm going to grab some strips here. Maybe I've got this purple. I think about that much of a tab. So it's about an inch. So when I fold it over a piece of, of the fabric, it's about an inch wide. And then I made it two inches long. So I'm going to do two of those. And then I think I want something across the top here. And I know it's right here. So I'm just going to grab a scrap of paper. And I'm in a kick of using the Lace Duo stamp recently. So I'm getting that out. And we're going to stamp it right on this edge. I think I need to re-ink my stamp pad. There we go. Hello, hello, hello. Glad to have you here, Sheila. Oh, Sheila. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to take this and I want it to go here and I'll stitch over that later. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue right there in the middle and then lay my fabric in it. I'll come down just a little bit from the edge. And I'm going to flip this over to the back side and put a little glue. I'm going to sew. That's why I'm not worried about how much glue I put on there. If you are not going to sew, just make sure you get a nice even amount. Just smooth it out. And then this will go behind there. And then when you pull it out, you kind of see the lace sticking out. What do you think? You have a YouTube? All right. Thanks for sharing. Who has a YouTube? What do you share on your YouTube? 
and definitely follow each other. You know, it's I think it's a great source of inspiration is when we can go hang out at other channels. I don't get to watch videos very much. Occasionally when I'm sitting in here prepping for a live stream, I'll watch a few videos. At the same time, I try not to watch videos because I don't want to copy other people. I try to come up with my own ideas. So that's going to go over there. So imagine if you put this on a journal page, just glue this down by gluing here, 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 and then right in the center. And that's why I put the distressed ink. So I knew to put glue all the way on here. You can also add strips of paper like I usually do for pockets. And I think I will do that. I just won't do it in front of y'all today. And then you can have this come in and out quite freely. All right, so let's move this out of the way for a second. And so I have this belly band. So if I put the belly band down on the page, it should be eight and a half inches. And I found this guy. Eh, it's okay. I've got a large journal card that I'm going to go behind there. But you know, I think I want to do something unique. I want to make a pocket right behind here. And I'm going to grab, I've got some purple paper. These are old scraps that a lot of this, in fact, the purple was given to me. So I'm trying to use it up. All right, so what if it's not quite wide enough, but I think I kind of like that. It kind of covers up the other though. I wanted a pocket. Maybe I don't use, let's try this piece. Crash! I have a, a little stash of pieces of cardstock. Nope, that just washes it out too much. I wanted to put a second pocket, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm just going to glue that straight down onto the band and decorate the card behind. All of them. What is your favorite? You know, Sheila, what do you like to create with? Tell me what colors that you use most often in your junk journals and then I can help you pick a few colors of Tattered Angels. Yeah, that's what Robin just says. Pick your favorite, the favorite color you use the most. You know, if you're a vintage girl, walnut stain makes a beautiful color in the background. If you want darker colors, you can go for the coffee, you can go for burlap. Um, trying to remember what the other colors copper penny I think is another one that I have it's a pretty color and I use mine for watercoloring too to watercolor images the purple is awesome uh, what is it uh, uh, fully purple that's a great color all right I think I'm gonna leave that just like it is I may put Where do we put bloom kind of poking off there and maybe even we'll put a little piece of fabric behind the bloom so what if we did something like that okay I like that so I'm gonna move this over here for a second and again if you wanted to sew you could sew around the word bloom while attaching it to that flower. So I'm just going to put my finger right about there. It's better to put your embellishment on a belly band before you glue it down so that you don't glue it to your page. <laughs> Vintage pink is a beautiful color. Black, brights and black and white, but really I try everything. So dazzling diamonds would be a great color for you. And here's why it adds a beautiful diamond shimmer to your pages. And uh, let me see if I have one open. I do. So I can take this and put it into my spray box only because I don't want to get it all over my desk and it's clear. It's kind of a, a white, uh, 
diamond pearl. I don't know. It's hard to explain. It's because it's dazzling diamonds. I think there's like six or seven, maybe even 10 different mycoics in here. And so I'm just going to spray. And although you may not be able to see it in person, when you look at this, it will have a beautiful shimmer over the page. I'm going to set it aside to dry. I'll do this one too while we're at it. That way they're all matchy matchy. All right, so we had that belly band here. So what can we put on this card so it's not so plain? And I'm kind of thinking maybe we'll stamp down the edge. I cleaned up all my stamps so that I would be ready for gel printing. So I've only got a few that were still on the block that I hadn't put away yet. <laughs> so this is from the Blooming Cube. And I'm going to go down the sides. I'll kind of alternate it. Kind of like that, and then let's do it on this one as well. And you know, we could realistically, and I think I'm going to go all the way around, I think it kind of gives it a pretty look just adding that pattern on the edge. Living on the edge, <laughs> okay, that's twice I've done that today. What do you think? And then when we put this over the top of it, you've got that pretty journal card that doesn't detract too much from the belly band. So if we put this on top, that's a potential page that we could have. You like that? Thank you, Sheila. Yeah, they don't make it too dark. It's usually just right, Julie. Well, there are some very dark colors, though. A pretty green one, suggestions. The vintage green is a good one. Blarney is a good one. Um, I think my greens are in this bucket. Blarney is a... a it, it may look bright, but it's a fun green. And then... I don't know if I have vintage. I don't think. And I have some of the, um, oh, the Tattered Angels that come in my subscription box add-ons. Those are got some good greens in them as well. Like Leapfrog is a really bright green. Positive Leap, that's a really dark, dark, dark green. That's in the Positive Vibes. Trying to find some colors. I don't carry all of the colors. I need to carry this one. This one's called Hemlock Green, and I really like it. It's a pretty color. All right. Love the sprays. Stencil. Oh, you can also stencil on it, too. I don't know if that's what you were saying. <laughs> we could also stencil on that as well. I like that. Okay, so this is our last piece. So this was just a strip that was left over. It has a little stamping on it. And I don't know. I just thought that maybe something like that, it's in a little more of a statement piece on the page. And I think I'm going to glue that and let's find maybe a sentiment that we can put on top. So I'm just putting glue right on the top and I'm going to lay it down, kind of slide it into place. Now this, I would add strips of paper around the edge. Do y'all need to explain that for y'all? What I mean? I'll do it. So since this is such a tiny, tiny pocket, I'm going to come across the bottom here and add a strip of paper. 
about halfway up that piece. It's a one inch strip, the length of a page. I'm just cutting it even and then I'm going to go down the sides here. I usually start from the edge and kind of slide it over. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. So if you have a small piece of paper that you're trying to turn into a pocket so it'll actually hold something, this is roughly an inch and a quarter tall. So it's not a very big pocket. And you don't need very big pockets, honestly, but you may want it if you put something tall behind there to help hold it into place so it doesn't tip forward. too much okay so I'm adding those strips you want to make sure it's dry and then I'm going to fold these strips even with the edge of my paper and I'll kind of cut this at a, a little bit of an angle here just so it doesn't poke up and then you can see it when you glue it to your page And then I put glue on these little pieces, see how they kind of come away from the page? And then when you go to put your journal card in, we'll pretend that this is as wide as this, it'll go all the way to the edge. See how it went all the way to the edge? Whereas if you glued this down without these flaps, you just put glue on each side, then you're going to get that look as far as how far down it would stick to your journal pocket. Hmm. I already had this piece laying here. Do I want to use it? Make it a bigger one. That's a lot bigger. What if we do kind of a layered effect? <laughs> The bubble wrap hit the floor. All right, so here's a white piece of paper. If we put that behind there, I know it's a stark contrast, but we're going to alter it. You like that? Thank you. So first, I'm going to round the corners. And let's add, let's go ahead and around the corners of this one too while we're at it. Let's add some distress inks. And I think this time I want to stencil on my elements. So if we put that here and that there, wouldn't that look cool with some stenciling maybe? So first idea of the day is to gel print and then cut up, tear up those gel prints, make a Franken page, a master board, if you will, stamp on top of it, add more stenciling, whatever you feel works for you. All right, I think I'm going to spray this one. I want it to have a little more color to it. And since we have these pinks going on, I'll grab, uh, what do we got here? I've got the Enchanted Rose because I had an extra bottle and it's a pink. It's a little bit brighter than vintage pink because that's going to be real pale. Wedding pink is a, a super pale pink. I don't think I have this shade in my shop really. So I'm just adding a little bit of color there and let it disperse a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit of Dazzling Diamonds on top. And that just kind of makes that spread because it's kind of a watercolor paper. I'm going to use my heat tool to dry it. I am getting excited for my vacation. Uh, thank you, Julie. Thank you. Um, I'm ready to get away for a few days and not think about the day-to-day -day stuff I have to do. I'm hoping to do some sketching a little bit. 
because we're going to be in Alaska and it'll just have some pretty scenery that I can just sit and doodle and draw and maybe make some stencil designs. Since I sprayed over the distressed edges that had the distress ink on it, it just kind of gives it this, like it's been wet look. Of course it has been, okay? All right, so let's add a stencil pattern. My nose is itching. And I think I'm gonna do it with a blending brush. So I'm just grabbing a scrap of paper and I've got the diamond with flare stencil. And I'm going to use a Distress Oxide Mermaid Lagoon, and I'm just going to barely put it on here. All right, you ready? It's just a, a very subtle pattern on there. Okay, I'm liking that so far. So what can we do to this one? Well, you know, I have some of these gel prints left over. So what if we could do this, because that one's big enough to go all the way across. All right, so I'm gonna take my ruler, kind of line it up as best I can here to get it straight. And then let's line it up here. I'm going to cut off the excess. Maybe come down a little bit. I even have it right side up. There's The text is right side up there because that's kind of cool. So let's add some distress inks to that. You like that? Alright, so let's add that. And have a little strip of this. So what if we cut it? And we put it across here. I don't know if I want to go directly in the center or if I want to go this way. I think I'm going to do it that way. Yep, yep. I like it. I could move it down. No, I don't want to move it too far down because I, it'll be behind the pocket. So what do I have in here, if anything? These are some of my bigger flower elements, so they may not all work. What do I have? No, I don't think that goes. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've got one of these butterflies. That's what we'll do. Okay. I'm going to glue this piece down after I add some distressed ink to the edges. And I think I may stamp over it. So I'm making a journal card to go behind my little pocket. I have a few minutes left. Y'all enter the raffle. Smooth it out. Okay. And I think I'm going to go ahead and distress this one. And I'm okay. It's at a diagonal. We're just trying to do some collaging. So I'm going to start away from the edge a little bit and then trim that. Glue it in place. All right, any last minute questions that you have? I like that. All right, let's add some color to this butterfly and we'll put that on here and maybe we'll pick a, a word. 
Let's see if I have one. Do, do, do. Meyer. Majestic. That might be a good one. Okay. All right. So what color could we put on there if it's going to be behind all of this? So I think we can kind of make it a teal color. So I'm going to grab, this is Royal Peacock. It's close to um, Curious. It's in the shop. I've just got a little bit left, so I'm trying to use it up. So I'm dipping my paintbrush down in there, and we're going to watercolor this real fast. I'm just kind of coming in from the edges. And I think I'll grab a, another color here. So it'll have a little bit of that shimmer, especially if you shook it first, so it'll get it up into the liquid. All right, I'm going to change colors. I'm sold out, but I have the lily pad from the Dancing Dragonflies. And I think I want just a touch of this green coming in from the edges. Kind of let it overlap a little bit so it kind of gets that watercolor blend. Okay, clean my brush. And let's fussy cut that out. Let's glue it on our card. I may make one more little element and then we'll get off here. Well, I hope I've given you some ideas to try. Get out your rubber stamps, get out your stencils. Um, you can do the direct to paper. You don't have to do gel printing. And I have several direct to paper mixed media videos. You can do a search. For Linda Israel and mixed media and kind of see a whole bunch of them. I'm just quickly fussy cutting with my Fiskars Easy Touch. It's easier if you keep your scissors in one place and you move the object that you are cutting out. Okay. Now let's add some distress inks to the edges. Maybe a little bit more. It's a little damp because watercoloring it and it's thin uh, cardstock, I guess you could say, because it's not super heavy. I want it like that, maybe, or right there. I think right there. Oh, I dropped some Tattered Angels on there, but we're going to fix that. We're going to take, since it's already out, I've got the postcard collage again. We're going to stamp. It looks like I did stuff on purpose. <laughs> Now, let's put that right there. And if you want to add a layer of lace, if you want to add cheesecloth that you sprayed, you can do that too. You know, I, I tend to do a lot of mine very simply layered with papers a lot. Okay, I like that. So we're going to have this in here that's going to be in front of it and you can kind of pull it up when you put it in your journal and we've got majestic i think we need a little something on here to tone this down so what if i do my little scrunchy technique so i just put a little glue on here and i've got some fabric and i lay it down and then i just kind of pleat it in the glue. I'm not laying it in the glue until I'm ready to kind of grab some glue and mush it over. And I know this is going to cover up my butterfly and maybe I don't use it on this page. Maybe I use it somewhere else. 
and I'll sew this later. So let's look at it. Do I want to leave that there, put that there, or do I want to do it like this? You know what? Let's do that. I think I like that with that little pink popping through the background. So if you had that on a page, it doesn't have to be in the front. It could be in the back. All right, let's add the majestic. And I did it from the wrong side. I was going to do it this side. I don't want to accidentally get glue on my card, so I'm lifting it up. Okay, is that better? Mush it over. Yeah, the scissors are great. You get, you just get them. You know, if you struggle with your scissors, get them because I like them. I've had the same pairs forever. I think I have like four or five pair. I've got three that I pretty much know where they are and I don't know where the rest of them are. They're probably in a bin or something. I'm just, I don't know what I'm tinkering with this for. All right. Do you like that? So we made, let me grab some more paper here to lay out. I was trying to find some journal pages that I could lay these on. You know, even if you were to put them over, this is a all about robins behind there. All right, so let's put that one there, that one there, and then this one was pockets that went this way across the page. So you can have little tags. Try to get where you can see it. What do you think? Yeah, so many technical terms. <laughs> Alrighty. So thank y'all for being here. Let's let's do the raffle. Y'all have any last minute questions? Do you like what I made? And we mixed tattered angels with it. I didn't do it, but I'll spray this element here with tattered angels and what I'll do sometimes when I make things that go together is I'll get some paper clips out and I will clip those things together that way when I go to use it in my journal I know that I wanted those to go together they fit together if I didn't get enough glue I'll just add some more or you can make it look distressed on purpose so I'll do like this. This will be all together. So I'll be able to use it. All right. Thank you so much. All right, y'all. I'm going to pick a winner. And you're going to tell me, do you want the yellow? Never love anyone who treats you like you are ordinary. And the other was follow your heart that has a little flower. This flower is one that I took a picture of. And Norella of Calco Collage turned it into a digital image so that I could use it to make journal cards and whatnot. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. I'm glad you like it. It's a mixed media project. So we did some gel printing. We used some book pages. We used some scraps. Fabric. A little bit of everything. All right. I'll be back Monday. We're going to draw the raffle winner here in just a moment. Y'all get in on the raffle. Uh, Monday, I will be working with the planner kit that goes with a garden tea party. And I'm working on subscription boxes, getting those ready. So if you haven't already ordered your subscription box, get it in. Because once they're gone, they're gone. I'll be shipping them out on the 15th of the month. And then I'm on vacation from the 17th through the 25th. So I will not be shipping anything until I get back. And it depends on what it is. Some things may ship out, you know, the next day. And some may ship out another week later. Okay. All right. Drink of water. Hey, Vicki. Oh, thank you, Jenny. Thank you so very much. I mean, I know it's a long video, but it's kind of talking about the process and, and interacting with y'all too. Alrighty.
Let's pick a winner. The winner of the mini journal is Robin. Robin won. I can't believe it. it she wasn't the last person to enter either. <laughs> Robin hasn't won in a while. She's won twice today. That's awesome. Thank you, Robin. Yay! I hope you like it, uh, Morgan, when it comes. Especially when your stamp is put in the box. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, congratulations, Jenny. She won 40 junk bucks, Robin faints. Well, tell me which one you want, Robin. <laughs> Y'all, thank you so much for being here. I greatly appreciate each and every one of you for your support. Again, if you would, please give this video a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. And, of course, comment in the video section once we get off here of the live. And let me know what you liked. What was your favorite part? And what are some stuff that you want to see? May, okay, may the never, may the never love, <laughs> may the never love someone who doesn't love them as much. <laughs> you looked everywhere for that stamp. Oh, well, that's not a stamp. You want me to make it a stamp? Oh, yo, no, you meant the stamp that I was supposed to send you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Because I was like, I swore I got it in the box. Where did it go? Why can't I find it? So I must have sent it to somebody else. <laughs> oh, you're so close, Morgan. You're very welcome. Again, thank you all for being here. Come back on my next Monday. And the first Thursday of the month, I'll do more mixed media. And in between, I may have some tutorials here and there. So I hope you enjoy them. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you on Monday in the live stream. Again, I greatly, greatly appreciate each and every one of you. Y'all have an amazing day. Bye, everybody.